Hi everyone, welcome back to H&R Reptiles. My name is Ashton Riley and welcome to today's video. So, before we get started with everything, I'm sorry I'm a smurf. Yeah, my hand, my face, all over there. Yeah, I decided to dye my hair. They don't tell you whenever you dye it with splat that you're going to leak everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in today's video, I'm we're going to be doing something that I've actually wanted to do for quite a number of years, a project that I've actually been really super excited about. We're going to be setting up a saltwater fish tank. Now, if you guys probably know, I have a freshwater fish tank. I've been doing a lot of research on the saltwater and I found out that it's actually a lot more scientific to put together a saltwater fish tank than it is to put together a freshwater fish tank. And there's not a lot of videos that show it how to do the full process. So that's what we're going to do today. Well, technically this video is going to be about a week long, so you guys are going to be seeing the different steps. So this is day one. We're going to be getting everything together inside the tank and we're going to be setting up the water. Now, most of those days is going to be just the water filtering. It really sucks, but whenever you set up a saltwater fish tank, it actually takes a while. You have to filter it, make sure everything's okay before you add the fish in. Now. We're going to get onto this, so I'm going to have my camera woman push pause. Hi everyone, welcome back. So, our first step is we're going to wash this. Um, one thing before we start, in case you guys were curious who my camera woman was, it's Alicia. Um, this is my project, she's not really into fish, per se. Like she, I like oxalotos. She likes oxalotos. <laughs> and she likes like looking at my fish, but I don't, you know it's not necessarily her thing so the first thing that we have to do before we get started with anything is we actually have to wash it down now make sure you do it with a just a safe water and paper towels even though i know it's the apocalypse so there's no paper towels or toilet paper anywhere but we just want to make sure that it's all wiped down because during shipping, these tanks can be pushed up against anything. You just want to make sure everything's nice and good. Hopefully you guys didn't hear my camera woman laugh. We're just doing a really basic little... We just need to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Because you also don't know what they sit against at like the pet stores and stuff. Especially if you're doing a fish tank. I don't think it really matters too much if you're doing like a planet tank. I still wash them whenever I do. Okay, and that should be good. Just need to do a nice little thing. Now, if you guys are doing live rock in your saltwater tank, you don't have to wash it, but I'm kind of cheap. I don't have enough money to spend like $800 on the live rock itself. So I went with the cheaper option. I bought this from one of my local pet stores. It's awesome. It was only like 60 bucks, which it actually looks like live rock. So I really like it and it has a bunch of little indents. Now I wash this. Make sure you guys wash anything you guys put into your tank that's not live. Okay. Now we're just going to set this in here because we're going to build the sand around it. Doing it like this. We have a little um, anemone because we're going to be getting some clownfish that I'm going to set right here. Here's the anemone. Obviously, it's not real. I do plan on getting a real one eventually, but I want to cycle out my tank and make sure everything is safe for it before I bring in any live corals or anything into it, which I do plan on doing that eventually. Eventually. Like, way down the line. Have you guys looked up how much corals are? Okay, so we're going to add in the sand now. So I'm going to have my camera woman press pause again. Now, there are quite a few different substrates that you can use for a saltwater fish tank. I personally recommend the 
live sand. I've read a lot of good reviews about it. There's water inside of it. All There's a bunch of good like bacteria and a bunch of good stuff in here. I'll have my camera. Whoa. For general use. So this stuff, you don't have to rinse it out. In fact, if you rinse it out, you can kill the live sand. You just go ahead and put it right in. Yeah. And it's called the Caribbean Sea. It just seems like a really good thing to do, especially if you guys are planning to have gobies in your tank because um, they're sifters, or if you guys are planning on having any little crabs or starfish. Now we're going to cut this open and then pop it in. Okay. Now this is going to be a little difficult. My bad. Okay, I'm really bad at this, so I'm gonna have her push pause so I can do this without embarrassing myself to the entire internet. Too late. Okay, now we're doing the water. First, we are going to start with this. We have a five gallon bucket filled with water. So with this, we put Good put. Okay, they need us. Then we move on to the next. Now, for this chemical we're going to be using now. Okay, now we're going to do the next one. Now it's the same as before. All of these chemicals are different colors. There, and there's a little air bubble. Yeah, let me just get that air bubble out. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's not like we're injecting it into a puppy. Sorry. That was also 1.25. Oh, my bad, you guys. Got distracted. Okay, now we're going to be adding the water conditioner. We're going to be... Now, water conditioner is very important if you're using tap water because tap water is not safe for aquarium fish or reptiles. Okay, so 2.5. Right. Mm hmm Okay, now that, we're done with all the chemicals for it. Now we're going to be adding the salt. The salt's easy. We have our little half cup. We're going to be adding five of these because it's a five gallon. Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. As you guys can see, this is not my fish tank. 
I'm pretty no. sure that's Josh. That is Josh. It even says his name right here. That's Josh. <laughs> now? Now, the reason why Josh is right here and not my fish tank is, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this stand right here is plastic. I thought it'd be good because it's a pretty sturdy stand. No. But after filling the fish tank up a little bit, I was like, hmm, I wonder how much gallons this is. So my husband looked it up and it turned out a 20 gallon tank is um, 166 gallons, uh, pounds I mean. In just the water. In just the water. That doesn't include the sand or the glass or the coral. So <laughs> it was starting to snap this. So me, my husband and my sister, Alicia, my cameraman, woman, sorry. We had to manhandle the tank full because I wasn't going to waste my seawater from over here to over here. But now it is over here and I think it actually does do a lot better. This stand we have can hold 1,500 pounds. So I think we're good. We decided to put it on the big... Can I say bitch on YouTube? Pretty sure you just did. Well, yeah. We decided to put it on the big bitch. So... Um, we filled up the tank with the water. It took several hours. It's nighttime now. It's taken several hours to do this. Now, in that process, I also hooked up this little light thing. Uh, I like it because it has the coral light. Then you tap it, and it has white. This tank will clear up, but I really like it. Um, it just screws right to the thing. And then we used an aqua clear filter. Um, it's right here with four different filter medias. Um, Point it out again. Right here with the four different filter medias. Um, at the bottom we have a sponge filter. Then we have some carbon. And then we have some um, um, bioclear. And then we have some um, bio rings right up here. Now this should keep our tank nice and filtered and clean. And it should keep all of the ammonia levels down in it. You know, we got that all going nice and good and I really like it because a lot of filters have like a really loud sound but it's not really that loud it sounds like what Rango's drip plant does so it seems to work pretty well now we're going to be leaving this to let everything clear up and everything and so I will let you guys see it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, look, the water naturally moves the anemone so it looks like it's real. I think it's awesome. Okay, you guys. Bye. Okay, um, it's been about two, three days. No, today's the third day. Yeah, today's the third day, sorry. I didn't figure that you guys would just want to see the empty plane tank for those other three days. So this is the third day now. The water's been cycling. The salinity level on the gravity level is at where it's supposed to be. Everything's good. Um, the other day we went to PetSmart. PetSmart. By the way, I do not recommend buying animals from Petcore or PetSmart, but like other stuff like decoration, that's fine. But I got this little cave back here. It's pink. It matches the main thing. I got that little cave back there for one of the fish we're going to be getting. Then I got this piece of fake coral. I like it because it matches the pink theme for our tank. What do, what I have to say, guys, we're gay. Um the air pump I have I couldn't find any actual um, things that I actually liked that are made to sit on it so I just made my own and put the thing on it which that meant I had to um, pinch the cord a little bit so it wouldn't like bubble intensely because usually if there's something it kind of blocks the bubbles a little bit but so I got that going and um, we've already picked out a list of fish we want. We're going to be ordering them online. 
So you guys will get to see a little unboxing part and how to acclimate the fish. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, that's what we've got so far. And yeah, the next couple days, we'll be doing more. Turn it blue. Oh, and it's blue. I love it, you guys, after it's like blue and then once I turn it off, the tips of the anemone glow and it's actually really cool. It's not dark enough to show you guys. I'll try to get a picture of it on my phone. But yeah, it's looking really good. It's super clear, which I'm really surprised about, to be honest. But yeah, it's re looking really, really good. Yeah. Bye. Okay, so as you can see, we added new stuff to the tank. Um, we just did our water test, and everything's good. Everything is how it's supposed to be, so we can actually put the fish, start putting the fish in there uh, within a couple of days, which is super exciting. The little purple thing is going to be for one of our fish that kind of needs a cave-like thing. Not telling you guys any of the fish we're getting. It's a surprise. But yeah, the tank is all nice and ready and everything's set up. I, yeah. And the testing kit I use makes it super easy. I'll do a review on the testing kit, maybe. But yeah, so. Hi everyone, we just got our shipment in from Blue Zoo Aquatic. Um, we had already opened it up to make sure everything was good. Whenever we opened it up, it came with an acclimation kit with some stress reliever. And I think this is fish food. Yeah, that's fish food. Which is pretty cool, you know. Um, like I said, I did already open it up to make sure everyone was alive. The heat pack is still good. In Washington, it's good cold. To be honest, I was really surprised that they were able to send me these because I got them from California, the heart of the apocalypse right now. So I'm actually really surprised that they were able to send these to me, which is awesome. If that's the heart of the apocalypse, are we the brain of the apocalypse? Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay, now I don't know if you guys will be able to see Oh, I'll him, make sure they're able to see But the little goby... Kind of ish see it? Yeah. Doesn't look nearly as cute. Oh, there we go. Okay, and then we're going to pop his bag in here so it can get to temperature. Here, we'll just stick him back here. There. Okay, now the next one we're going to bring out is a little clownfish. Yes, he, they are very tiny. Ever since I was a kid though and I watched Finding Nemo, always wanted a clownfish. I did do my research, I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, Finding Nemo, let's get a, a clownfish and then neglect it to death. No, I did my research. <laughs> we're gonna pop him in. Um, I, we're gonna grab out the other clownfish. Now this clownfish is much smaller than the other one, which means that the other one is the female and she'll be more dominant and she will most likely pick on him a lot. If you guys have clownfish, you guys know. If you guys are getting into clownfish, you guys should know. The bigger the clownfish in your tank will always be female and she will pick on her mate. But if you take away her mate, she'll be depressed, so. She's like an abusive wife. Let's put her in, put this one in now. The next one is a fish that my sister was actually super excited about. His name is Jacques. He is a coral bandit. Wait, move your hand. There we go. He's a coral bandit shrimp. Coral Here you go, Jacques. There we Coral go. shrimp, yeah. But these little guys will actually set up little areas in the tank where they will pick all of the oh, that's so perfect. all of the gross stuff and the parasites off of the other tank mates. And the other tank mates know they will actually <laughs> line up to get 
parasites picked off of them, so these guys are crucial to have in a tank. Now, for the last one, last one is one that I got because my husband freaked out at the pet store whenever we seen one of those, one of these. So I had to get him one order. Now, it is all blacked out. That's because this species of pygmy angelfish is more prone to stress. So we're going to carefully bring him over. Hopefully he'll swim down. We got a coral angelfish with a lot of oranges and some purples. But it's my husband's two favorite colors, so there you go. She was perfect. She is the biggest fish in the tank. She shouldn't get much bigger at all. But yeah, they didn't have any of the smaller ones, and my husband really wanted one of these. So. Okay, now. We leave the bags in here for about 30 minutes and then we're going to do the rest of the acclimation. I will catch you guys then. Bye. Hi everyone. So I got the fish out of the tank. I let them sit for about 30 minutes. Then we got everyone inside of here. We got a drink acclimation system going to slowly introduce them to this water. We are going to give them a little bit of the stress reliever. We're going to be putting this in over a period of time. Mm, there. And then that'll mix around. Then we're going to be putting the rest just up like this. Yeah. There's all the fish. Zoom in on them a little bit. The zoom's right there. Okay, so we decided to name him Jacques for obvious reasons. The Coral Beauty doesn't really have a name yet, but she is gorgeous. And then the two clownfish, the bigger of the clownfish, the female, we're calling her Nemo. And then the other one, we're calling him, we're going to name him Marlin. I know, I know. And then the little goby actually does not have a name because I was going to let my sister name him because she actually picked him out. But yeah. Alright, as we're looking at fish everyone, I want to see your comments down below telling us your favorite kind of fish. I'll get us started off. My favorite kind of fish is a Pocosimus. My favorite type of fish is a cowfish. So tell us below, what is yours? Oh, if you guys are curious, my husband's favorite type of fish is a lionfish. And a moray eel, it's kind of tied. I think shark is up there, but you can't really like keep sharks. Not the real ones. You can but, keep no, little... He likes like the great white sharks. I bet if we had the ability to take care of one I and mean, in the space he would we would have one okay so um, I'll let you guys see after this has filled up so we're going to actually fill it up at least half maybe even three times what is in the bucket and then we're going to put all of the contents in the bucket inside the tank okay bye guys Hi everyone, welcome back. So as you can see, we got the drip acclimator stopped. Um, we got three times the amount of water than what we started with. All of the fish seem to be doing really good. We got some stress reliever left that we're going to put directly into the tank. Now, let's get these guys going. First, we got the little coral beauty angel that we're going to be popping in. I'm covering it because I don't know if these guys are jumpers or not. We're gonna let... Now we got the little coral shrimp that we're gonna be putting in there. And he's a coral banded shrimp. He was actually very difficult to get out of the thing because all of his long little whiskers and stuff.
And now we got one of the clowns out. Okay, we gotta to pop her in and hopefully they find the anemone. Anim hopefully she finds the anemone. Anim Now we got the other little clownfish, the little boy. Hopefully, he'll run up and find his mate right away. Just down there. There you go, Marlin. Go find Nemo. Where's Nemo? Go find Nemo. Go, Nemo. Can you find Nemo? There's Jacques right there in the back, too. Now, this little one was the most difficult one to get because he is such a tiny little fish. I'm hardly ever going to see him in the aquarium, but this is our goby. I forgot to say what gobies did whenever I was unboxing them, so I'll do it now. Gobies are actually amazing sifters. They pick up the sand and they sift it out of their gills. Did he find Nemo yet? Nemo's right there behind the thing. Okay, okay. Okay, so we're going to put in this goby and then this will be the last time we ever see it. Especially since it's, if you look closely, it's actually got pink spots. Yeah, so it's it, super If you notice, frozen. he's got kind of a theme with this tank. Might be a little hard. Oh my gosh, it is hard. Reunited. And it feels so good. There's Shuck. On the bottom of the coral. No, wasn't able to show. There he is. Now we have the lights off from, for a reason. The fish need to get used to their new home. Without any lights on, it helps reduce stress. Now I hope you guys all enjoyed that little video on me setting up my saltwater fish tank. If you guys did, make sure to like give this video a like and comment down below and subscribe because we post new videos every week most of the time. Bye!